Good morning. Today we look at chapter 2 of 1 Thessalonians. And uh, in chapter 2, Paul talks about his life and his work in Thessalonica a little bit. He, he talks about that. He reminds the people of, of Thessalonica uh, about his work in their community and how well he was in their community. Um, he, he continued to work at his profession to to pay his own bills that way so that he wasn't putting any uh, any demand upon them or or causing them any hardship for you know having to pay a salary or, or something that way and and um, you know a lot of the early apostles did that these these uh, as they were going around they they would they would pay their own way as much as they could yet within the churches that they were visiting and and establishing they would encourage them to make offerings and to you know to have it for the benefit of the people the benefit of the community and also um, you know some of it went back to Jerusalem uh, to aid in you know the the work of the of the of the church body that way and so there was and there, there's always been that I mean in the Old Testament you know we we can read about you know the Jews and their their tithing um, and their their offerings to the temple and their offerings to God and and all of that so I mean it, it's always been a part of of who we are as followers of God that that we give some of what we have, some of what God has blessed us with, back uh, for the continuation of God's word in, in our community and, and in the greater community that way. But Paul is saying that while I was with you, I didn't put any demands upon you that way so that, so that I might be able just to freely and openly speak to you the word of God and encourage you in your faith. And, and, and he said in, in verse four, he says that we speak not to please mortals, but to please God who tests our hearts. And, and I think that's something to think about. That as Christians, as people who believe in God, that we speak not to please mortals, but to please God who judges our hearts, who knows what's in our hearts. And, you know, we can tell people what they want to hear. We can tell people what they think they'd like to hear. But we oh, we really need to make sure that as people of God, that we speak God's word, that we speak God's truth, that we don't twist it around. And and I've mentioned before about how there are a lot of people in the world that that twist God's words, that that take you know uh, one little bit of, of something and they, and they take it out of context. It, it, context. It's like you know the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil it isn't the love of money is the root of all evil no that's not it at all it's the lo- it's not money is the root of all evil it's the love of money is a root it's one one aspect of evil but it's been twisted and, and that's just one as one example of of what happens and, and so paul is saying that you know we speak not to please mortals but to please god we come to you with this message of salvation in Jesus Christ, whom the Jews crucified. And, and you know, it wasn't just the Jews that crucified him, but, but it was all sinners. But, you know, it, it's, it comes into that play and into that being that, you know, uh, the, the speaking of God's words and, uh, and the coming to people with God's truth is, is uh, what's of utmost importance um, in the world and, and for people to know Jesus as Lord and Savior. And that was Paul's primary goal, was as he went about to these different communities, that, that he was commissioned by Jesus Christ himself to, to bring this message to the Gentiles, to bring it to the people of, of Eastern Europe, to the, you know, not just to the Jews, but, but, but to those that were outside of the Jewish faith that way. And then Paul says in the end of verse 8, he says, we've done this, why? Because you've been, become very dear to us. You know, he's writing a letter. He's wanting to come back again. He's encouraging them to continue in this belief in Jesus that he taught, him, taught them. Why? Because they have become very dear to him. And not only to him, but to Timothy and Silvanus and, and to the others who have worked in their midst as well. And, and I think about that is, uh, 
I've lived in a few different communities over, you know, in my lifetime. And, and each community that you go to, you move to, uh, there's a little bit of uh, hesitation, a little, a little bit of wonder how I'm going to fit in, wonder who I'm going to meet, wonder who I'm going to hang out with, uh, and all of those things. And not always just as a pastor, but as, you know, many years ago, just as a, as a young man, a young married man, just going out to start out a new life. And in each of those communities that I've lived in, I've found people that I, that I treasure, that have become very dear to me as well. Um, they're not all that way, to be honest, but, but you know, the, you, you come to care and to trust the, the community. And, you know, and, as, and if you don't, you know, as, as a teacher, as a pastor, as, as someone that's going to be involved in the community, if you don't come so that you have a heart for this community, if you always are doing something with a, a chip on your shoulder or you're always doing something because you have to or whatever that way, uh, people will know it and understand that. You have to become enmeshed in the community. You have to become a part of them. And it, it has to mean something to you to be a part of a community before the community is really going to accept you and embrace you. And so when Paul says, because you'll become very dear to us, I, I, I trust that he believes that. And, and I know from my own experience, and I, I, if you think about it as well, you think about the places you have lived, and, you know, these places become dear to you. And, you know, we, it's different, different communities. You know, I've, you know, some communities I've lived in, you know, they say, well, you know, you got to be careful when you get down around that other town because there's a bunch of really weirdos down there. You know, those aren't very good people. But, but the reality is, is that if you move there and you find those people, they're good people. It's just like the old saying that, you know, when you move to a town and if you're looking for people, I mean, if, if, if the people that lived in the other town were all a bunch of nosy busybodies, well, that's what you're going to find there. But if you find a bunch of people that are friendly and outgoing and that, well, that's the same kind of people you're going to find. So we need to become enmeshed in our communities. We need to have that community mean something to us. We need to let that community know that, that they are dear to our hearts before before they're going to trust that your words are are valid that that your words have meaning and so this is what Paul is reminding them that you know while I was with you you became very dear to me and I want you to know and I want you to trust and I want you to remember that Jesus is Lord and that God sent him into this world for you and for me and for our salvation and in verse 13 Paul says you received the word of God that you heard from us you accepted it not as human words, but as what it really is, God's word, God's word. And, and it's when I talk about Jesus as Lord and Savior, when I talk that Jesus has been crucified, died, and, and raised from the dead by the power of God, those aren't my words. That's God's words. That's God's wisdom for you and for me. And, and, and I found often that, um, you know, if, there, if there's a text on a Sunday morning that, that I want to not preach on. Uh, it seems that so often that that's the one that, that I feel compelled to. And I've had Sundays when I've written a sermon on, on the other three texts. There's four texts on a Sunday, the Old Testament reading, a, a psalm, a, a New Testament reading, and the gospel. And the first time I preached on the text that deals with divorce, I, I wrote sermons on everything else, but it, it just... I. I preached that Sunday on, on divorce because it, it, wasn't, it wasn't necessarily what I wanted to do, but it was what God was leading and calling and directing. And, and so this is, this is what Paul is saying. You have heard it and you have accepted it because it's God's word. And it's God's word for you. And, and you know, he says this is, this is of utmost importance to believe that it's God's word for you. And it isn't just fancy, flowery speech coming out of me. But Jesus really did die on the cross. God really did raise him from the dead and, and all of that. And this is what I want you to believe because you have become very dear to me. And um, we're in the Old Testament readings in this daily read a Bible, um, we're in Isaiah. And, and there's a favorite passage of mine in Isaiah is, you know, God says that, 
you have become uh, you have become very dear to me and I love you you know I have done all of this why because I love you and and that is such a comforting thought such a comforting realization that God has done all of this because he loves us because he loves me he loves you and Paul as we get to the end of this chapter 2 says that, you know, I want to come back to you again, but he says Satan is blocking the way. And Paul is in prison right now for preaching Jesus Christ. And Paul is saying that, you know, what God wants me to do is preach Jesus, to teach about Jesus, to encourage others in that way. But right now Satan's blocking the door. And and we find that in our lives too. I mean, Satan is alive and well and... And, and, and we'll do anything that he can, everything that he can, to get in between us and our relationship with God. So I, I think it's, it's important that we, that we talk to God in prayer, that we read his word, that we study his word, and that we trust what Paul says. That I come to you with God's message, because it's God's message, because you are very dear to me. And we believe it because it's God's words. It's not human's words. It's God's word. So may God richly bless you today, as he does every day. Um, tomorrow, I don't know what time I'm going to come to you with my devotion. I'm having, uh, having my right knee scoped tomorrow at some point in time. But I will be on sometime tomorrow. Just don't know when. Again, God's blessings for today.